Welcome everybody, Josh Powell here, you're watching Amateur Pool, and today we've got another APA League match. This is between myself and Buzz McComb. Uh, Buzz is a skill level 7, I am also a skill level 7, the game is 8 ball. Uh, we just lagged, I won the lag, let's get into this match. I'm getting ready to break, I hope everyone's having a great day so far. Um, appreciate you clicking on this video and watching with me. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like and leave me a comment if you want to chat. I'll get back to you for sure. You know, so far I've been able to keep up with all the comments. May, may get to a point where I can't, but as of right now, I'm responding to all of them. So if you want to chat, hit me up. So I broke. Um, looks like I made stripes, but unfortunately I don't see a good shot on stripes here. I don't think I have a starter shot. Uh, the 11's jacked up with that 3 ball, um, the 15, 14 are tied up, and the 10, 12 are tied up. So there's not a whole lot I can do here. I'm trying to look to see if there's even a good safety to be played, and I don't really see one. Uh, so I want to definitely take advantage of the shot itself and do something, right? I need to open up some of my balls, rearrange the table. So what I did is I opened up my 10, uh, 10, 14 and left the cue ball on the bottom end of the table so he wouldn't have a shot at the 6. Any shot he has is going to have to go up table. I mean, it's not the best, you know, it's not the most ideal situation in the world, but I had to do something, right? I couldn't just let him do what he wanted to do. I had to try to do something. Um, there just wasn't a whole lot of options there. Sometimes that happens. You break. Especially in APA, when whatever you make on the break is what you are. Uh, sometimes you break and you just don't have nothing. You know, you know, you guys already know. He's going to shoot that two into the sides. What he's eyeballing up, maybe not. He's, he's taking a second to think about it. Getting back down on it. Get down on it. All right, made a good shot on that two. Now he's got the one if he wants. I think he's got the five as well. I'm pretty sure that five can go past the six ball down here in the bottom left corner. He's looking at the one, though. Uh, he's got to figure out that three ball is really his problem. And he just addressed it. Nice shot, Buzz. He just addressed it. Now it's open. Now if the five goes past the six, he's looking good. If the five doesn't go past the six, he could try the combo. Or he could go up and shoot the seven ball and come back down around for these. I think it probably did pass. It just was real tight. And he, um, he scraped the ball. Um, Left me a couple shots here. I'm, I'm looking at that um, 14 right now to see if it goes up in the corner because my 11 and 15 are all tied up. And if that 14 goes up in the corner, I can position myself to shoot that shot and open up the 15-11. I could draw off this shot and open it up as well. I tried to, tried to do that. Didn't come away with a ton here, though. Ah, oh, man, this is kind of, I could bank the 15. Okay, I'm looking at cutting the 11 into that side pocket. It's a pretty thin cut, guys. You know, it's one that it'll, it'll definitely make the table a little bit better for me if I can make it because then the only thing I'll have to worry about is that 15 ball. But it's not an easy shot by any means. Got it. Got the shot. Made the shot. Now I can shoot the 10. If I shoot this 10, I need to get over be underneath of the 15 so I can shoot it up table. It's the only place the 15 goes is up table, and I have a good angle here to get to it. Maybe a little hard. Yeah, it just bounced out a little bit. That was a tough speed. I mean, I, I still really have to shoot this shot because we're at a point now where I can't really safety the guy. He's got too many balls on the table and a couple of them in the pocket, so I can't really try to play a safety on him. I'm committed. I've got to try to run out here because if I don't, he's going to get out on me. So I got to take the tough cut on the 15 up into the corner. Good news is the cue ball goes straight back and forth with this shot. And as long as I leave the cue ball on what we're seeing as the right half of the table, then I can shoot that 14 up in the upper left-hand corner. If my cue ball ends up on the left side of the table, then it's going to be tough. But first things first, I got to make this 15 ball. It's a tough shot. Too tough. Too tough for me, that shot is. Oh, yeah, you can see, excuse me, you can see me on camera. I was doing this because I jabbed at that shot. I didn't stroke through it. That stroke was very jabby. Uh, 
which is ultimately why I missed that shot. You know, if you don't have a smooth stroke, you're not going to make your shot. You may get lucky once in a while. You may uh, accidentally hit it in the right spot, but if your stroke's not smooth, it's, it's, it's random. You're gambling. All right, he made the combo, drew back. He still can shoot the six if he wants, but he's going to run into my 15, and that's going to make his next shot a little bit tougher, especially if my 15 blocks him up. Oh, I don't think it did. I think he can still shoot that shot. I think he can still shoot the seven ball. I'm just not sure what he's going to do with the four ball afterwards if he shoots a seven. I think that's what he's trying to figure out now as well. It's not the easiest position in the world to be in. You know, you know. All right, he's putting right spin on this cue ball. You can see his tips over on the right side of the ball. Mm. I think maybe, maybe he thought he couldn't make it. Maybe it was covered up by the 15 just enough, so he tried to put right spin to throw it to the left, uh, the seven ball, because if you put right spin on the cue ball, it throws the object ball to the left. Same's true if you put left spin, it throws it to the right. Little nuances like that are what separates, um, you know, different skill levels for sure. Oh, I don't want to bump that seven. I still got lucky, though. I bumped the seven, got lucky, and I ended up with a shot on the 14. I can play this with straight top, maybe a touch of right, or I mean left, not, not right. Straight top or just a top with a touch of right or left. <laughs> and uh, come back up for the eight ball in the top left corner. Yeah, that's what I did. Just straight top pretty much there. You can see I didn't put left on it because when it hit the rail, it didn't shoot over to the left at all. It just came straight up the same line. So this should be it for game number one, guys. Good guys should be up. One to nothing. One to nothing. I've played Buzz a few times. He was on the channel in a match once. This was months and months ago, but um, Buzz is a very good shot. You know, when he's on his game, he is extremely difficult to beat. And even when he's not on his game, he's still tough to beat. He's a good shot. So you can't take him lightly at all. He will beat me uh, horribly if I, if I take him lightly. Even if I don't take him lightly, he's still liable to come out on top. But we'll see. We will see. That's what we're here for. You know, we're here to see little Timmy. Go ahead and, and keep watching. We'll find out. Stay tuned. Same bad time, same bad channel. You already know what it is. Not a sponsor. You know? You know. What am I trying to do here? Again, I broke and I have no shot. <laughs> I was trying to get him right behind that eight ball, I believe, and play a safety, but... That was a hard ask. I, what are the chances I break twice in a row like that, make a ball, and get absolutely zero shot after the break? So that's why I like the open after the break format. You know, I mean, how are you penalized by making a good break and making a ball? You're penalized because you have to shoot at those balls and you don't have a shot. If you make a good break and you make a ball, you shouldn't be penalized. You should be able to shoot whichever ball set you want. That's the way the rules should be. The APA does it this way because it's easier for higher skill level players to run out more often if it's open after the break. You know, because if you have your choice to shoot whichever ones you want, uh, you're going to run out more often, and that's going to discourage some of the lower skill level players if they play a higher skill level player. See, APA shouldn't make a blanket set of rules like this and have it all geared toward the lower skill level player, I think they should have a rule that cuts off above skill level six, right? If, if both, both parties are above a skill level six, they should be able to push out nine ball, they should be able to use a jump stick, it should be open after the break, you know, and have a real match, a real match, you know, not quite as handicapped. Because uh, all these rules are set up to kind of level the playing field, right? Uh, like a push out after the break in nine ball, that favors the better player. Open after the break is going to favor the better player. So all these rules that APA puts in place are designed to level the playing field. Really, they're just irritating, in my opinion. Because they hinder me. They hinder me from running out, guys. 
All right. Meanwhile, Buzz is, well, I was about to say about to run out on me, but that didn't happen. Captain, you know, it's tough acting, to act it on that shot, bro. You know what I'm saying, bro? Bro, you know. You already know, bro. All right. I got a tough table here, though, man. That one and two, uh, the two ball does not look like it goes past the one. So the one and two are basically my nemesis here. I got to figure out what to do with them. I'm looking at cutting that six up into that uh, bottom left corner as we th we see the table. Uh, that's probably going to leave me a shot on the five unless I use draw. Then I'm going to have a shot on the three. If I use follow, I could have a shot on the four. Only thing I don't want to do is hit that 11 and scratch or miss the shot. You know, that's the other thing. When I Remember when I said the only thing I don't want to do? I lied. There was actually two things I didn't want to do there. I didn't want to miss the shot, and I didn't want to scratch. I left Buzz and Angle to break out his 14 if he wants to. I don't think he has to, though. I think that 14 can be cut into that corner. Oh, Buzz is following the Josh strategy, you know? Just miss and let your opponent figure it out. Josh, that's me. I'm Josh. You know? Hi. What up? What up, though? That's what we say here in the in Michigan. What up, though? That's a Detroit thing. I don't know. Is, does anybody else say that across the country? You guys say what up, though? What up, though? Um, you know what else is a Michigan thing, too? I had someone in my comments say it's called shape, not shapes with an S. But that's a Michigan thing for sure. People in Michigan put the S on the end of a ton of stuff, like um, Kroger. It's actually Kroger's here in Michigan. Uh, Meyer, it's Meyer's here in Michigan. You know, we uh, we put I don't know why we do it either, but we put an S at the end of a lot of words for whatever reason. It's just a Midwest. I don't know if it's all Midwest thing or just a Michigan thing, but definitely here in Michigan. Just like in California, they say the before any street name, the four hundred five, the one hundred one, the I fifteen. And I don't, ooh, you know why I missed that is I hit it extremely hard trying to get the right angle to come over and break out my one and two, which I did break out the one and two, but I missed the dang shot uh, because I hit it so hard. So what I should have done there, instead of swinging so hard, uh, I should have swinged more smoothly. Uh, a smoother stroke there, instead of using power, just smoother, would have pocketed the ball and broke those out. It was just a bore. Uh, I was going to say a poor stroke, and I was going to say a bad stroke, so I said a bore. It's a bore stroke, you know? You got to watch those bore strokes. You got to watch them. Sometimes they come out and get you those bore strokes. Different strokes for different folks, you know? You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. <laughs> The facts of life. That's my, that's my generation right there. I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. So I was, I was born in 1980. So I was 10 in 1990 and 20 in 2000. But the facts of life was one of my jams when I was young. I used to watch that show. And I'm not even embarrassed to admit it. You know, stop laughing, little Timmy. You probably watched it too. You know what else I watch is Fraggle Rock. Fraggle Rock was a great show. A lot of good shows back then. All right, Buzz is going to make me pay here. There's no way. I'm pretty sure that 14 goes straight past the nine into the corner. And if it does, all he's got to do is roll it in. He'll be dead on the nine ball afterwards. Um, and he makes the nine ball into the same pocket with bottom. And that's going to bring him back for the eight in the side. He's got to wait for that Yahoo on the other table. And I say Yahoo because I have no idea who it is. So um, I'm going to call him a Yahoo just because. We'll never know who they are, so they'll never be offended. Unless they happen to pop up on camera in a second, then we'll know who they are. I'll have to redact my statement, retract and redact, you know. I'm going to retract it from, from the verbal on the video, and I'll redact it from the transcripts as well. Yeah, big words today, guys. Using big words. Look at the big brain on Brett. All right, he's looking. He got himself in a tough spot here right now because the three ball may hinder him. He's looking like he's got to curve this a little. Yeah, and he hit the three, man. But still, where my two ball is, 
makes the table a little tricky. You know, it's not a, a perfectly easy run out here. I've got to address the two ball, but the good news is I have ball in hand. So you'll address it right off the bat. When you got ball in hand and you got a trouble ball, address the trouble ball. So I'm going to make this three and pop the two off the rail here. Bingo, bingo. Now I can shoot the one. Also move the nine and open that pocket. Uh, the five ball is the tricky one. Now I got to make sure to get perfect, perfect shapes on that five ball. So I can make this lightly and shoot the two in the side, or I can make it a little, t a little harder and shoot the two in the corner either way. Or I could just miss the one, you know? I didn't even think of that option, to be honest with you. <laughs> that option didn't even cross my mind until I did it on, on camera. And then I thought, pure genius, you know? Just give Buzz a game. That'll keep my handicap from going up, even though it cannot go up any further. It's already a seven. So I can't even use that excuse when I miss. I can't even say, oh, I was just keeping my handicap at bay. Nope. Nope. That only works when you're a lower skill level. Doesn't work when you get to the max. Can't go up anymore, bro. Bro. Bruh. Bruh. You know? You guys know already what we're talking about around here. You know what's crazy? I wasn't sure if I was going to mention this or not, but I got a copyright uh, strike on my channel. And I'm very careful to take out all the music and everything. I did a shorts video um, not too long ago about uh, this dude fixing your draw stroke in under 60 seconds uh, through a video and I kind of poked fun at it because it's it's outrageous to think you've you've never seen somebody shoot but you're gonna fix their stroke in under 60 seconds. Yeah, let me, hold on. Hear me out for a second. There's a lot of helpful videos on YouTube. There's a lot of good tips, a lot of good tricks. I've learned so much from watching videos on YouTube, but do not ever let someone tell you on their video that this is the way you must do something or this will absolutely fix your problems because that's a bunch of bullshit. It really is. So you watch all the videos, you, you take all the tips in and most of them are very good tips, you know, um, but you use what works for you and don't use what doesn't work for you. Simple as that. Listen to it. Try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, try something different. But don't let someone who's arrogant on YouTube and thinks they're the best in the world when they've never even had a name for themselves other than YouTube, um, don't ever let them tell you that they absolutely know how to fix something when they've never even met you in person. They've never once seen you shoot. It's arrogant and insulting to you guys. If I made a video saying, I can absolutely fix your stroke if you do this, it's pretty arrogant of me to say that. And it's, uh, it's kind of insulting to you guys. Think that you would believe something like that. You know what I mean? So the videos that you should watch are the tips. You know, this is how I do it. This is what works for me. Um, don't watch those, those Yahoo morons who say, this is absolutely the right way to do it and, and this will fix all your problems because that's, that's bullshit. Anyway, so I made a video poking fun about the guy who said, I can fix your draw stroke in 60 seconds through a video. Made a funny video about it. The guy got butt hurt, filed a copyright claim against it. So you, YouTube took it down. Uh, it's no longer on YouTube. If you didn't see the video, maybe search other social media venues. You know, I don't know. <laughs> But you won't find it on YouTube anymore because uh, Crybaby, Sensitive Nancy, uh, complained. And you know, it's funny, the way I used the video, I could actually fight it under the Fair Use Act because all I did was review and criticize his video. I didn't plagiarize or copyright his video. I used a clip of his video to criticize and review it. But do I really want to go through the legal process of fighting that copyright claim, you know? Not really. You know, if he, if he does it again, absolutely. I will file a claim in my district, see if he shows up, and we'll go from there. But for now, we're just going to call it what it is. He's a butthurt Nancy, sensitive. Everyone gets participation trophy kind of guy, and uh, that's what it is. Anyway, sorry for the rant, guys. I went on way too long about that. Let's get back to the match. My bad. My bad, guys. My bad. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm not going to say his name. <coughs> I'm not going to say it. 
Uh, and if you like him, hey, keep watching him. If his tips work for you, that's great. Uh, but just don't let him tell you absolutely this is the way you should be doing something. Because that's a bunch of bullshit. It's bullshit. Look at Shane Van Boning stroke. No pro or no teacher ever in the world would advise Shane Van Boning to use that stroke. But guess what? He's one of the top players in the world and the top player in the United States. And his stroke isn't the way that you should do it. So that's my whole point, guys. Don't let anyone tell you that you have to do something a certain way because uh, we're all different. You know, everybody's stroke's different. Anyway, I put way too much time into that already. Let's move on. The score is one to one. I'm at the table about to make the eight ball, and I'm about to be up two to zero. You know, there it is. Two nothing. Two nothing, honey. Two nothing. I'm going to do that second ball break again. Get that cue ball to come off the rail back into the stack and hopefully help spread them. Get that eight ball flying around. Did you see that? That eight ball was heading towards the corner and then it got kicked up to the top of the table and bounced back down. I did make a ball. It looks like it was a stripe. Let me just count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, I made a stripe. I made a stripey. And for once, I actually have a shot. Holy macaroni, it's a Christmas miracle, you know? We're close to December, so I've got a Christmas miracle. I've made a ball and have a shot. I can shoot that 11 down in the corner, draw up a little bit, and I can either shoot the 15 next or the 13 next or the 10 ball next. I like this. I'm shaping the 10 ball, but what I need to do here is I need to make the 10 ball off of the 7. If I clip the 7 and make the 10 ball in off of the 7, then the 7 should move out of the way and open up the uh, the eight ball. It makes the shot a little more difficult, but it's the way I have to play it if I want to get out because that eight ball is not going anywhere right now. Oof, that bridging is a little awkward too. I didn't like it putting my hand in front of the 15, so I got a long bridge going in the back. I executed it nicely, but the eight didn't completely open up. It, um, it opened up from where it was and got stuck up to the four ball. So now, Table's still tough. I've got plenty of shots here, but I've got to figure out that eight ball before I really facilitate a run out. I need to figure out that eight ball. You know? You know. Think about making a t-shirt that just says, you know? Question mark? <laughs> just kidding. I'm not going to make that shirt. No one wants to wear that shirt. Nobody wants to wear that shirt. I'm starting to feel a little better, guys. If you watch all my videos, you know I've had a head cold for the last few days, and I'm starting to feel a little better. So I'm going to start putting out uh, more videos. I haven't been putting out a, as many videos as I usually do uh, just because a lot of talking like that was hurting my throat and my chest, and then I sound funky as well, right? sound like I'm talking through my nose. I still have that going on a little bit, but it's getting better. I'm almost healed. Almost healed. I probably had COVID. You know, I probably had the Rona or something. Probably had the Corona with Lyme. Nah, I don't drink Corona. I do. I'm lying. I do drink Corona occasionally. I'm in Mexico. You know, I'm lost in Mexico. I'll drink Corona. That was a good cut shot right there. Not easy. But look at me now. What do I got? Nothing. I ain't got no shot. Uh, if the six ball wasn't there, I could bank it back into the side. And also either shape the eight or bump the eight. But with that six ball there, the only option I might have is to make it down in the bottom right corner. Yeah, where I'm looking now. That's that's a that's a hail mary shot. Really, if I shoot it that way, I should shoot it slow. That way, if I miss, I just leave that boss you know close to that corner pocket over there. So that way, when he tries to play a safety on me, um, I have a good easy shot to kick at. But in this case, I don't think I'm going to get out here. The chances are pretty slim. This shot is very low percentage. But, I mean, what else am I going to do? There's no place to safety him that I can see. You know, i got to try to do something. Oh, I actually came out with almost a good safety on that. I didn't even think about putting him behind his own balls up there. The problem here is if he doesn't have a shot, he's going to hook me up hook me bad. He's going to hit the three and just leave me right behind the one. 
That looks like what he might be doing. No, he played the combo on the two. He missed it, though. Wow. That surprises me right there, guys. I'm surprised he went for that. Um, if you'd just be a little more patient, if he would have played the safety on me there, if he would have just stopped the cue ball directly behind the one, that would have been a real tough ball for me to hit. And he would have had a, a you know another chance, a good opportunity. Still, he, he's probably going to get another shot here because look where that eight ball's at. You know, what am I supposed to do with that? I can maybe spin this one in off the rail, this stripe, um, the 12 ball. But even after that, that eight ball, I'm not going to have a good shape on it. Okay, I did. I made that 12, spin it off the rail. I see a shot. Yeah, right where I'm calling it. I can, it's just like if you're playing one pocket, it's a very, very common shot in one pocket to do this type of bank. Um, doesn't make it easy, though. It's a hard bank. Still very low percentage. Very low percentage, but what else am I going to do? I got to try to shoot it. Too much. Cut it too much. Not a bad attempt. Not a bad attempt, but now my opponent, who is more than capable of running out, has a wide open table, nothing in his way. So I do not expect to win this game. I do not expect, although it happens, you know, we all miss. So it's not impossible I could win this game. I just don't expect to. Percentages say I'm probably going to lose this game. But deep down, you're thinking, miss, miss, you know. It is what it is. But Buzz is a good shot. I doubt, I highly doubt he's going to miss here. Could, you know, it happens to all of us. Ah. Delicioso. All right, he's going to make this four. He doesn't really matter where he shapes from this four because he's got that two up there. He put a little right spin and came back, and now he has the one, which is a good shot. But does he want to shoot the one first and then have to shoot the combo and shape the six at the same time? No, he doesn't. So he's going to shoot the two first, which is the smarter way to play it. Because if he shoots the one, then all he's got left is a six-two combo. And then he's got to shape the six after he makes the combo. So depending, that can get funny sometimes on you, you know. He made the right play there, shooting the two first, then the one, then the six. All he's got to do is roll this one in. He'll have the eight in the side pocket, and that's going to tie us up. It's going to tie us up at two and two. This is a race to five, guys. Uh, we each have to go to five games to win. So whoever gets five games first wins this match. Right now it's two to two. Buzz's break. Made a stripe in the side and the cue ball in the side as well. So it's still open. He made a stripe, but he scratched. So that doesn't count. Still an open table. And since he scratched on the break, I've got to shoot it in the kitchen, behind the line, in the kitchen. I've heard a few different um, reasons for that term called in the kitchen. Uh, the most convincing one I heard is um, when pool started becoming mainstream or more popular, you know, they were all played on big tables, and most houses weren't big enough to accommodate a table in one particular room. So they usually use a dining room because that was the biggest room in the house, and the, it butts up to the kitchen. So part of the table would, would in, 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 uh, encroach into the kitchen, and that was usually the head string where you break from. So they started calling it, in the, you, have to, you have to shoot from in the kitchen, you know. But I don't know if that's facts. I don't know. It's just something I heard on the interwebs, you know. Probably true. Everything you hear on the interwebs is true, the way I heard it, you know. Everything you hear on the internet is true, except for that mf -er who said he can fix your draw stroke in 60 seconds. That stuff ain't true. And don't listen to that BS, that bull larky, that bull snack, that bull schnittle wap. Don't bring that nonsense around here. All right, I'm going to leave that alone, guys. I'm going to leave it alone. I didn't even want to say nothing about it, but it irritated the hell out of me. So I you know, figure I'll say something. Got to say something. It is what it is, though. I mean, some people are crybabies. I'm going to stop. All right, Timmy.
I already told you I'm going to stop talking about it. Stop bringing it back up. I said, stop bringing it back up, little Timmy. Let's move on with our lives. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right, I can try to cut this in the corner, but I think I might run into the 15 ball here. If I can get around the 15, it'll be a good shot. Got it. Got around the 15. Now I can shoot this 13 with kind of a stun shot, like a slight draw maybe, and just run into the four ball. And I'm looking right now, I should have a good shot at the 15 after that. The trick is going to be getting from the 15 to the 8 because that 3 ball is kind of really big from that shape. Stop this and run into the 4, like so. I got two options here. I can put a lot of left and come above the 8 ball, and then I could end up with a difficult shot on that 8 ball, or if I put mostly top with just a small amount of left, you know, like a couple millimeters, I can try to come back over almost to where I'm at now, underneath of the three ball, and shoot the eight in the same pocket. Those are the, the best options, I think. I went underneath. That's a little dangerous, too, because if I hit that three ball, I'm not going to come away with a great shot. I'm probably going to go right towards the eight ball, and knowing my luck, end up right on top of it. But as it stands, made the eight. Uh, was that a break and run? Shoot, I don't even remember. I got to talking about little Nancy, sensitive little Nancy, and I, f I forget if that was a break and run, guys. I forget. I forget. I forgot. I forgot. I forget. You know? Happens to me a lot. It's that short-term memory loss. It's that short-term memory loss. You know, you already know little Timmy. Little Timmy knows exactly what I'm talking about. That short-term memory loss. It's Dino Mike. All right, I broke. Looks like I made a solid, I think. Uh, and I've got another shot. Got a shot on that four ball. Got a shot on the four ball. I can hit this with straight top and come down for the uh, one or the seven. Well, I hit it kind of soft. I still have shots, but not as easy as they could have been. Um, I've either got a thin cut on the seven or a thin cut on the five uh, or a thin long cut on the six. Personally here, I like shooting uh, probably the seven first um, because the five and the one will be easier to shape when that cue ball goes back. When I make the seven, the cue ball is going to go back and forth, um, and it's going to be 90% sure I'm going to end up with a shape on either the 5 or the 1, right? Let's see. Yeah, good cut. Good cut. I've got a shot at the 1. Now, I can shape the 5 here, but, yeah, that 3 ball is my concern. So I'm looking to see if I can make it from down there because right now I'm in a position I could shape it. A um, little bit of top, a little bit of right. I'm going to come off the top rail, which is the short rail, and then I'll come off the long rail over there on the side and back down to see if I can shape that three. It's a good idea to try to get that knot. I want to save that until late in the game. That speed looks pretty good. I think I got there, guys. I think I got there. So now I just need to look at it real good because I can just roll this forward a little bit so I'm not shooting over the 13. And then I can make the six with left, come off that right side rail, and go up to shoot the five. And if I stop shot on the five, the eight goes down here in the bottom left corner. I might be able to, to break and run this one, guys. Fingers MF and crossed, you know? You know, I don't know why I'm abbreviating the cuss words, and I've already said bad words in this video. I've already been a potty mouth in this mofo. So uh, I'm going to have to click the little button that says... I swore in your video. I swore in my video, YouTube. What the are you going to do? I don't think there's anything they do about that. You're allowed to swear in your videos. It just, the fact that they ask you about it makes you feel like you shouldn't do it. You know, like maybe they're not going to, you're going to slip out of the algorithms and stuff. You know, everybody's all algorithm happy on YouTube. It's crazy. Craziness. Crazy. What? 
I said, I said, I said, son, what you talking about, Willis? All right, done, done with that. So I'll make this five. I just need to get the angle on the eight so I'm not hindered by the 11. This should be good. Only thing I got to be concerned with is make sure I don't bounce off the nine here and scratch. I'll probably play it with follow. I could put a lot of draw on it as well and just come up and hit the 11 ball. But I think follow will just push me into the nine full and I don't think it'll scratch. Yeah, that's a breaking run. Boom. Now I'm on the hill, boys and girls. We're on the hill. You guys know where that term hill comes from? Now, this one I do know for sure where it comes Well, I can't say for sure, right? Someone told me a long time ago where this comes from, and I believe it to be accurate. I almost made the eight on the break there. Um, it's, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Thanks, little Timmy. Hill, hill. So the term hill is uh, a wartime term, uh, and it was adopted in the pool because during a fight, a battle, whoever has the hill has the advantage, right? If you're on the hill, you got the advantage in the battle. So that's what being on the hill means, you have the advantage. So when you're on the hill, you got the advantage. That's how that term was adopted in the pool. Um, again, don't know it to be 100% factual, but I'm pretty sure that makes sense. You know, it is what it is. Look it up, little Timmy. You tell me, leave a comment if that's correct. If it's not correct, let me know. Let me know now. Also, you know, I want to do, I want to start doing some other types of videos here. You know, like, uh, I don't know if you saw my drinking video, you know, just drink and make you a better player. I want to do more stuff like that occasionally as well. I'll keep bringing this content, of course. Everyone likes watching amateur league matches, and I do as well. So I want to keep bringing this content, but I also want to put in some other videos, you know. Different stuff, man. Different strokes for some different folks out there. You know, all types of different folks out there. So you need to have a little variety. Ooh, he tried slow rolling that 10 in. It was not an easy shot, uh, but he gave it a shot. You know, almost made it. Didn't quite make it, but he almost did. What am I looking at doing here? What am, what am I even looking at? I got to figure out. Um, well, that's the thing here, guys, whoever, whoever ends up being solids will probably lose this game because the five, four, two, seven are all blocked by the eight. I needed to make that stripe there. The fact that I missed the stripe and he missed the stripe and I'm giving him two shots to establish stripe stripes. Oh, willing to bet I probably lose this game over that. Because whoever is, whoever is solids here is at a big disadvantage. The three six is stuck together. Uh, the five four two seven are all blocked up somewhat by the eight ball. You know, with stripes, the only one you got to worry about is the thirteen. Well, the eleven too, but I think there's there's options with the eleven. He could draw into the eleven right here if he wanted to, or follow, follow into it. That was a good shot. He broke his eleven clear and put my 3-6 on the rail, so they're still not easy. Could have broke them up for me, Buzz. Could have done that. I thought we were friends, you know. Here I am thinking we're friends, and you put my balls in a worse spot. Stop touching my balls, Buzz. Stop touching my balls, bro. Leave my balls alone. Me too. You know, I'm going to call me too. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. Don't want to offend nobody again. There's apparently some sensitive mofos out there. And I'm surprised, you know, the way the way I commentate my personality, I didn't expect any uh, super sensitive people to watch me too much, to be honest with you, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm a habitual line crosser. Let's just say it that way. Not just on here, in my life in general. I cross the line, you know. That's what I like to do. I'm a line crosser. Something that shouldn't be said, I probably say it occasionally. Oh, boy. Look at me. Now I'm going to start getting myself into trouble, be canceled, be part of the cancellation culture. All right. We're not going to go no further with that, guys. We're going to go back. We're going to keep it to pool. We're going to go back to the match, and we're going to have a good time. Just some friends watching a match together is all this is, you know. 
I'm no professional. I'm no commentator. I just like to commentate. I'm no singer. I just like to sing, you know? It is what it is. That was smart of me to get the seven ball out of there, but I could have I could have put in a little more effort to make that ball though. Um, if I had made that ball, I could have used top right and came over and hit the four or five and kind of pushed them away from that pocket. I should have focused on that bank a little more, guys. He's gonna shoot the eleven fifteen. Yep, and he did well. Did well with it. Yeah, I think this is probably all she wrote for him here. Yeah. Yep, make the dime, just stop it there for the 11. If you want to make the 11 first buzz, you can, but it's easy either way. Make the nine, stop it there. Use a little top right on the 11. That'll bring them up for whatever that last one is in the upper right-hand corner. I think it's the 13. And then from there, all he's got to do is get his cue ball to the left side of the table, and he can make the eight. Willing to bet, buzz is out here. Willing to bet it. You want to bet, little Timmy? Shake, shake on it. Shake, oh, no, you don't want to shake. Pound it, pound it. No? Okay, we won't bet then, you know? I offered it. I figured I'd just offer. You don't want to bet. We don't have to bet. It's all right. No one's forcing me to, you know? No, this is it's a pretty easy rack, especially for a guy named Buzz, you know, Buzz McComb. Buzz Lightyear probably get out of here, too. You know, I don't know if Woody could get out here, but Buzz Lightyear for sure. Three to four now. Buzz's break. What's he going to make? Nothing. That looks like it's a dry break, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm back at the table, and I'm on the hill. Let's see what I can do. Let's see what Josh can do. That's me. I'm Josh. You know? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Did I mention that you should probably subscribe? You know, if you're not already subscribed, just hit the subscribe button. That's all you got to do. Like, uh, there's a little button somewhere down there. You just click on it and it pulls it up and there's a subscribe. If you're watching on a computer, there's a button in the bottom right corner that looks like a subscribe button. Just click on that. That'll subscribe you. You know, so I, I make it easy. Make it easy for you. You only see that if you're on a computer, though, I think. I don't think you see that on a cell phone. I think you can see it, but it's not clickable on a cell phone. All right. So if I can figure out the five ball here, because I think the six goes past the um, uh, 12 ball up there in the corner. I had to think about that for a second. Six goes past the 12 up in the corner. Everything else is open. I could draw off of the three right now and try to get the five out of there. Problem with that, there's no guarantee I'm gonna come away with a shot. No guarantee I'm gonna come away with a shot. So let's see how I do it. Okay, I'm just gonna cut it in. I'm not gonna try to get it. You know what I think I was trying to do there? I was trying to come all the way back over because I think I might be able to make the five into the side pocket off of the 14 ball. I don't know for sure. The 14 may be a little too far out of the pocket, but that, that's a good option to try if I can't figure nothing else out. Sorry. Sorry for all you English people out there. If I can't figure anything else out. If I can't figure nothing else out, you know, that's probably the way I play it. That's just the way it is. You know? Sometimes you got to him haul around with the big game. With the cack cack. You know, years ago, man, I can't even, I don't even know how long it's been. I was probably like eight or nine years ago. Ed Bassmaster, he's a YouTuber. Look him up. It's a funny dude. Uh, he has a character called Mumbles. That guy cracks me up so much, man. He puts in these fake teeth and wears a cowboy hat. And he, he talk loud. Hey, she don't want to give me eating all, you know, just like that. And people try to understand him. Look him up. You, you're welcome. Once you do look him up, it's funny. If you haven't seen him, probably most of you have seen him already. He's hilarious. Most of you have probably seen him. Okay. I couldn't get out there. Buzz is back at the table. Let's see what he does, Buzz. What he does, Buzz. You know, Joe, my flowers won't grow. Isn't that so?
All right, he's going to shoot the nine. Is he going to come back for the combo or is he going to shoot the 10 first? I like shooting the 10 first and getting a more straight angle to shoot the um, 14 ball. That way he doesn't have to move that 10. He can shoot the 14 and come off the rail around the 10. I think he's got a good angle for it here. He could even just make the 10, uh, the 12 or the 14, sorry. He can make the 14 and just draw straight back without hitting the 10. Okay, he played it short side. A little dangerous, but nice shot. Nice shot. Good shot, Buzz. Is he going to end up... Um, no, I think the 13 will go past the 11 pretty clear. I don't think that's a problem. He does have a little too much angle here, though. Uh, now he's going to kind of run into the five ball. Personally, I use a little bit of top here and pop the five ball off the rail. Yeah. See, I would have just focused on making that 13 with top and the top just hard enough to hit the five and bounce it off the rail out of the way. Then he would have been dead on the 11. But, I mean, it's a, it's a tough shot. It's touchy either way. He had a different plan in mind, which probably would work better for him. Uh, that's just not the way I would have played it, I don't think. So I can go two rails back and forth to get on the eight here. I just got to be careful not to hit the 11. So I came a little deep. I got lucky. I got lucky to hit the one um, and actually create some separation there. You know, I didn't have to work out that nice. I could have been stuck right on the one. I'm going to end up with a long shot in this four because I'm pretty straight in now, and I don't want to try to hit this too hard and miss it. So I'm going to take the long shot on the four. Problem is, it's pretty straight as well. So shaping the six is not going to be super easy off this shot. If I can make the shot too, it's a long straight shot and I'm on the rail. And I want to hit it very slow because I can't do anything with the cue ball. So I'm just going to slow roll it. But pretty good. That was a pretty good shot. There's a couple of ways I can shape this eight ball. I could stun down below it. I'm looking at playing it with top and coming into that side rail and back out so I can shoot the eight in the bottom right corner. Got to be careful not to hit the 13. It kind of looks to me like I might run into the 13 here. It's going to be close, I think. Missed the 13, but scratched. I had an itch, guys. I had to scratch, you know? That's all there is to it. When you have an itch, you got to scratch. That was for the game, too. What a moron. I should have took a little more time figuring out the path of that cue ball there. Or I should, if, it was, if it was that close, which it was obvious it was. I could see it from here. It was going to be close. Um, <clears throat> I should have just looked for a different path, you know. Maybe hit it with a stun so I come down below or draw, something like that. There's a lot of different ways I could have got on that eight ball. The eight ball's in the middle of the table, wide open. That was dumb. That was a, a complete error on my part. You know, first mistake I ever made in my life right there. You know better than that. You know better than that. I make mistakes all the time. Probably about 500 a day. It's just the way I roll. All right, Buzz is about to tie it up. Hill to hill, guys. So who's got the advantage when they're both on the hill? You know what I'm saying? Who's got the advantage? I'll tell you who's got the advantage, whoever wins. You know? It is what it is. You know? I don't know why I always do that in my head, like a bobblehead. Like I'm a bobblehead doll or something. So dumb. So dumb, guys. You know? Can't even create my own videos. I got to copyright other people's videos. So dumb. So dumb. Anyway, I said I wasn't going to talk about that no more. It was the last time, I promise. My fingers are crossed, you know. I'll probably talk about it again later in a different video some, sometime down the road, you know. It's hard for me to just let stuff like that go. Um, you know, I felt like I was attacked. And I, honestly, he may have felt like he was attacked. But what a stupid thing to say, right? You got to expect to be attacked a little bit. I can fix your stroke in 60 seconds or less when I've never met you or seen you through a video on your phone. You gotta expect some some idiocy to come out of that, right? Because it's a pretty stupid thing to say. It's pretty ignorant. 
So, I mean, you know, hey, is what it is. I guess supposedly I shot the first round, you know. Maybe I deserve what I got. Maybe not. Either way, IDGAF, you know what I'm saying? If you don't know what that means, ask your kids. It means I don't give them. I just don't, guys. You know, I make YouTube videos for fun. I enjoy all of my viewers and subscribers, man. You guys are awesome. And I'm sure a lot of you are probably subscribed to that other channel I'm talking about as well. And if that's so, awesome. You know, don't feel bad for that. You know, uh, if, if anybody who can help you with your game, I'm all for it. But just be cautious, you know, what advice you heed from people. You know, take it as advice and determine whether it works for you or not. Don't let anyone tell you you have to do it a certain way. That's my whole point to all this, guys. I'm not trying to bash anyone in particular. I'm just trying to make sure you guys know, as, as viewers of my channel, because I appreciate all of you guys and I want to see you do well. I want you to know there's not going to be one person out there who's going to tell you the exact miracle fix to everything in pool. You know, there's a lot of tips and a lot of things you need to learn. Um, but you, 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 you guys are the ones that have to fix your, your stroke in your game. And it takes time on the table. You got to practice. You got to play. So take advice from, from people, especially when they're making videos. You know, some of them are real good. Some, some advice is out there. Are excellent. Other, other people give advice that say, eh, maybe, maybe not so great. But listen to it and decide whether it works for you or not. I'm just saying, think for yourself. Don't let people tell you, you know, they have a miracle cure for some bullshit or the way you have to do something to be doing it right. It's just dumb. It's dumb, you know? D-O-M. I know that spells Dom. Just kidding. Just kidding, Dominic. Just a joke. Anyway, back to the match. That's my fourth or fifth time saying that now. Anyway... Hey, made a nice bank shot. Where was that bank shot when I was trying to make the seven ball on that other rack? You know what I mean? Why didn't I focus a little bit and make a bank like that? And also, what am I going to do with this two ball down here? I might have not an angle now, I don't think. Problem is, I think the three ball is the best ball for me to use to break that out, and it's the only ball I have a shot on right now. So I'm going to shoot the three ball, and then my two ball is going to still be tough. I could end up playing a bank shot on that two ball, I suppose. Uh, can I cut the five in here with lots of right spin? I don't think I can put that much right on it because the five is such a thin cut. I'm not going to be able to help it get over there with draw. Normally, if that five were a little closer to the pocket, I could just use some draw and right, and I could break that two up pretty easily. Um, I think the best thing for me to do is just cut the five in slowly and bank the two over into the same pocket as the five. If I want to get out right now on this shot, I think that's probably my best option. Unless there's something I can see at the table that I can't see on the camera, you know. It looks like I'm going for the breakout here, which I'm not sure I'm going to reach it. I'm not sure I can reach it, Josh. Yeah, it was a good try, but I didn't think there was any way I could ever spin it that much, you know. Now look at me. Look where I'm at. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Oh, I'm going to play the old kick safety. I'm going to kick off the rail, hit the two, leave them back there. Not bad, but by moving the two ball, I created a perfect breakout opportunity for him. Because the 15 is makeable, and the 15, if he makes the 15, the cue ball is going to break up the 213. So he doesn't really have a shot right now. But when he gets a shot, oh, he moved it. Wow. I might have kicked at one of the balls at the top end of the table just to leave that 15 there. Because with that 15 there, he had a great breakout. The 15 might still be a breakout ball, but I can't tell if it goes past the 13 into this corner pocket or not still. I'm very parched, guys. Let me get a, a non-sponsored drink. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, little Timmy. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these messages. Just kidding, I don't have any messages. Because I'm not sponsored yet, you know? I actually do have a sponsor, guys. I reached out to some companies. 
and uh, one company got back to me. Um, they gave me an affiliate code, like for you guys to use to purchase stuff from their their site. But the code doesn't doesn't come with any discount for you guys, so I haven't I haven't even said nothing about it because I feel like I feel like I want you guys to benefit from something if I'm gonna push it. You know, I don't want to just say hey use this code because it helps me out. Um, and I appreciate that. I'm sure some of you guys would do that, but I would rather say, hey, use this code because it gives you a discount and helps me out. You know, so that's why that's why you haven't heard nothing about it yet. Just deciding how I want to play that, you know, or if I want to use it at all. Um, and when the time comes, I'll let you know, you know. But as of right now, it is what it is. We'll figure it out, guys. We'll figure it out together, and we'll uh, we'll get something that benefits you and me, me, and you, your mama and your cousin too. That's an old song right there, boy. Oh, I had to curve. I had to curve that one. Now where that fifteen is at, it's a perfect breakout ball. I'm not sure he can get it on this shot. He might be able to do right spin. Make the 15 with right spin, send the cue ball off the bottom rail and back up into those two. But it's a risky shot from here, and he could end up getting hooked because all of his other balls are up on the other end of the table. Smart. That was smart of him not to try it right there because now, if he wants to, he can make the 11. He can either do it now or make the, uh, the 12 first and then make the 11. But off the 11, he can come down to the bottom half of the table and get a good angle to make the 15 and break out the 13. But if he waits and does that on the last shot, <clears throat> then not only does he have to break the 13 out, he has to also shape it. So he followed the Josh method there. <laughs> That's me, I'm Josh. He followed the Josh method there and just went ahead and missed a shot, you know. Let your opponent deal with it. If you can't figure it out, just let your opponent do it. You know, just go ahead and miss the shot. I say that in a lot of videos because I do it a lot. But guys, it's never intentional. And I'm joking. In case you don't notice already, I'm joking when I say do it that way because um, you should never do it that way. Did you guys see what I did there? I took an intentional foul and I put his breakout ball in the hole because his other two balls are up here on this end of the table. He could still swing at him and try to break it out now. But I... Um, I made it a lot tougher for him by doing that. You know, he played a good hook on me. So instead of trying to hit one of my balls and giving him ball in hand so he could break that ball out, I went ahead. Ah, he tried to safety me again and slopped in the ball. APA, you can't call safe. Well, you can call safety, but it doesn't matter. If you make a ball, you still have to shoot. So what he's doing is positioning another ball down by that hole so he has a breakout again. So what I want to do here is not leave him a shot for the break. I can leave him a look at that um, at that 12 ball. I just don't want him to have an angle to break out the 15, you know, because he's not going to make that 12 ball likely unless he has an angle to break out the 15. That's why I spun the cue ball over here on that side of the table because now he can see his ball, but he has no good path to get back to the 13 and break it out. He's kind of trying to do the same thing, but he left me a shot here with an angle to break it out. If I can put the one in the side with top left, I can come off the top rail and back over to break out my two ball. It's not the easiest shot in the world, but it's there. Looks like I'm going for it as well. That looks good. Got it. It didn't have to come out that nice, you know. I took a gamble there, breaking that out, and it came out great. So, good job on screen, Josh. Good job. Oh, I'm too short to reach it now. It's all right. I got a secret weapon. I have an extension that screws into the bottom of my cue. Um, can make it either six inches or nine inches or three inches, you know. I wish I had that in real life. <laughs> but... I went and put my extension on. You can see I'm using the whole nine inches. Stop laughing, Tim. I see you out there, little Timmy. Um, 
That way I can reach a shot a lot easier. It's still not super easy to reach. I'm going to hump the table to do it. See me? I'm pregnating the table. If I have little diamond tables, I'll give them away to you guys. You know, I may end up with some, some little, little baby diamond tables after that. If so, I'll do a giveaway. <laughs> but I made the shot, and now I'm looking good. Got a shot on this eight ball into the side pocket, and this will be for the, for the dub. Rub a dub dub. We'll see. Ka-chow. That's your match, guys. That was a good match. Buzz, great shooting, buddy. You did excellent. Um, you know, my mama always told me life is like a box of chocolates. Just kidding, guys. I'm not going to go that lame. But I appreciate everybody out there, man. Thanks so much for listening to me rant and spending some time watching uh, a good match with me, guys. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, do it. Do it. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. If you want a short rail shirt, link is in the MF and description. Otherwise, guys, we'll catch you around on the next one. Peace.